Coming up next on Flightline News, you've heard about the new ATP certification, find out what the finalized requirements are, and how it applies to you. And let your passion for aviation soar. We'll tell you how to get your very own sneak peek at the new Aviation 101. All this and more as Flightline News starts right now. Hello and welcome to Season 2 of Flightline News, I'm Bob Thomas. If you're not familiar with the Flightline News, we publish one or two episodes a month, keeping the students and staff updated with important information about the flight department and other news in the aviation world. We'll start today with the new Airline Transport Pilot, or ATP, certification rules. Since the Colgan Air Crash in 2009, lawmakers have been looking at changing the qualifications to become a first officer in the airlines. After some debate and comments, lawmakers passed Public Law 111.216 requiring all first officers to hold an airline transport pilot certificate. In August of 2013, the FAA released their final rules that redefined the ATP certificate, making a new restricted ATP certificate, and most importantly for Ember-Riddle students, provide a reduction in flight hours required with academic credit. Remember that there are still other minimums in Part 61, like that of night time and instrument flight time, that must be met in addition to the total hours and cross-country time. Here's how the flight hour credit works. With no aviation degree to qualify for ATP, you need 1,500 total hours and 200 cross-country hours. If you receive a bachelor's degree with an aviation major from an FAA-authorized school with 60 aviation credits, the hours are reduced to 1,000 total with 200 cross-country. At Embry-Riddle, the only route to do this is the airline pilot concentration. If you have a bachelor's degree with an aviation major and 30 aviation credits, the hours are reduced to 1,250 total and 200 hours of cross-country. ERAU degree programs of aeronautical science with commercial or military concentration, air traffic management with flight concentration, aeronautics, meteorology with flight concentration, and aviation maintenance science with flight concentration will be eligible for the 1,250 hour reduction. There are a couple of wrinkles on this, however. The FAA, uh, in, in when they published the rule, uh, insisted in the rule that the, the people who would be eligible for this would be trained under Part 141. And that's the way that we currently train is under Part 141. But for a time, uh, we were under Part 142. So when we submitted our application, we listed the, the, the uh, Part 141 training. We also uh, I indicated in the application that at one point we trained under Part 142 to see what the FAA uh, would require us to do with, with that. So we received permission to certify our folks under Part 141. And then uh, the FAA also said at that time that we need to apply for an exception so that our Part 142 folks would be eligible as well. So we immediately did that. And that happened a week or so ago, and uh, there's a 60-day comment period uh, on that. So we expect to hear something about our Part 142 folks within uh, a couple months. It is important to remember that all students must complete their instrument rating and commercial certificate at the Institution of Higher Education to qualify for the reduction in hours. In order to apply for the reduction of hours, you must go online to this website here, webforms.erau.edu public slash COA slash reduced ATP minimums. Fill out the form and records and registration will place a comment on your transcript stating that you have completed the degree and get the reduced hours. Before we go over the timing of the new rules, there are a few other aspects of the new rule that are important to point out. First, there's allowance of up to 100 hours of FTD time that can apply to your total number of hours towards the ATP certificate or restricted ATP certificate. There's also a new requirement for 50 hours of multi-engine training for either certificate. And in August of 2014, a new requirement of an ATP CTP, or ATP Certification Training Program, must be completed before you can take the knowledge exam for the Airline Transport Pilot Certificate. This ATP CTP course will contain at least 30 hours of academic training on topics like aerodynamics, meteorology, air carrier operations, leadership and professional development, crew resource management, and safety culture. It will also include 10 hours of simulator time with at least 6 hours in a full motion level C or D simulator, which is why the university has purchased a full motion simulator. And since we already had the uh, non-motion device, uh, we, uh, the CRJ200, we wanted to get a, a similar device, or the same exactly, uh, device for the uh, full motion. That's, so the CRJ200 full motion complements the non-motion. 
So we are the first in the country, first university in the country to go out and to purchase a full motion simulator. We've been working on it for over a year because we want to make sure that our students are prepared better than anybody for industry. So we've worked very hard. We've purchased that device. We've brought it in here. It's been delivered. It's been requalified by the FAA and it is ready to go uh, as far as training goes. So here's how the timing works. Starting August 1st, 2013, the restricted ATP certificate is available. From now until July 31st, 2014, pilots can take the classic ATP knowledge test. This test will be valid for 24 calendar months. This is both for pilots who have the regular ATP minimums and those that qualify for the restricted ATP with the reduced hours and academic credit. For that 24 month period, once the hours are met, you can take the regular ATP check ride. The last day for this type of classical ATP practical test will be July 31st, 2016. So if you think you're going to be at 1,000 hours uh, within two years, then you're smart to take the ATP exam now. And then uh, once you've got the 1,000 hours, then take your ATP uh, practical test. If you do not take your ATP knowledge test by August 1, 2014, you must take the new ATP CTP course before you can take the ATP knowledge test. Then, once you reach the hours needed, you can take the practical test. If you have any questions, please contact the flight department. Amber Riddle has hired a new Director of Aviation Safety for the Daytona Beach campus. His name is Jeremy Mammon. Hello everyone. I'm the new Director of Aviation Safety here at Amber Riddle. I have a passion with flying, aviation, and a safety background with flight training. I'm currently a CFI. I've also held positions in the Flight Standards Department. I'm looking forward to meeting and working with all of you. And please, my office is downstairs, room 118. Stop by anytime so we can chat and talk about safety. Fly safe. Aviation 101 is Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University's premier free online introduction to aviation. The Aviation 101 course will provide students with an introduction to some of the basic topics needed to become a pilot. Using 3D graphics and high definition video, students will learn about topics like airspace, flight instruments, airplane systems, and much more. We're releasing a sneak peek of the course for anyone to enroll. To sign up, visit erau.coursesites.com, select Aviation 101, click Self-Enroll, and enter the access code of Special VFR. If you need help, please contact Special VFR at erau.edu or call 386-226-6837. So please check it out and let us know what you think by taking the survey at the end of the course. Every year, we ask 8 to 10 students to be a part of the Flight Department Chairman's Advisory Council. This student group meets with the chairman, Ken Burns, on a weekly basis to provide feedback on all aspects of the flight department. And what that group is, is it's a brainstorming group of students that meet with me once a week. We discuss what's going on in the flight department. They act as a conduit for their fellow students to bring information and communication to me, the chairman of the flight department. We solve any issues that are occurring and we come up with ideas on how to make things better for the student day in and day out. It's a great group to be involved with. We've done tremendous things over the years. Some of the things that have come out of the Chairman's Advisory Council include the groups such as the ALPA-8 program and the club on campus. The FLAP, the Flight Line Assimilation Program, came out of a, that group as well. And many, many other numerous things that occur on a daily basis that make your life easier. Those ideas have originated from that group of students. So it's an exciting opportunity. I would like everybody to put an application in to join me. Our meetings this year will be held Thursday from 1300 to 1400. We prefer to have members from all classes, freshman through senior, as well as representation from each flight course. First year students are encouraged to apply. If you're interested, please write a one page letter stating your name, class, current flight course, total hours, contact information, and a couple paragraphs telling us why you'd like to be part of the council. Application letters are due no later than September 12th and should be dropped off with Deborah Preston, Administrative Assistant to the Flight Chairman, in COA Room 116. Final selections of the applicants will be notified by email and our meetings will begin in early October. If you have any questions, please contact Deborah Preston at 386-226-6837 or stop by COA 116. Since 2001, there have been 15 runway incursions on runway 7 right. Recently, the FAA has begun publishing a list of hotspots. One of these hotspots is here at the Daytona Beach International Airport at the intersection of Runway 7 Right and Taxiway Whiskey. The new Taxiway, Taxiway Yankee, is complete now and allows aircraft to turn early and avoid the hotspot intersection altogether, hopefully reducing the possibility of runway incursions. 
The Flightline Cafe has recently expanded and is now making made-to-order sandwiches and wraps. Have you ever wanted to own a Cessna for $4.49? Well, now you can. Or eat like the chairman and have the flight ops special. So check out the Flightline Cafe after your next flight. Finally, Flightline News would like to congratulate our Women's Air Race Classic team of Danielle Ehrlichman and Val Minhania for their first place finish in the Collegiate Division of the Women's Air Race Classic. And congratulations also to the Eagles flight team on their fourth place finish at the National SafeCon competition. Next time on Flightline News, we'll take a look at the new full motion simulator installed on campus and the pre-activity computer exercises or PACE that will eventually replace the current workbooks. For any questions, comments, or future story ideas, please contact us at specialvfr at ereu.edu. That's it for this edition of Flightline News. I'm Bob Thomas. Thanks for watching.